Good morning. Ooh, my collar messed up this morning. Good morning, y'all. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. As it pertains to, well, uh, it is what it is, y'all. Let's get this thing started. Because I'm about seven minutes late this morning. I apologize for being a little late, but we're going to get this thing started. Who's in the room? As you guys come in the room, tell me how your morning's going. Tell me how your morning is going. Mine is going confusing. Confusing. Mine is confusing. I woke up. I thought it was later than what I thought it was. It's like, oh, Lord Jesus, it's not this late. So, uh, good morning, Cry Young. I'm CR Young. Good morning, CR Young. DeAndra, good morning. Good morning. All right, well, this is Faith for Financial Freedom, where we believe one thing, and that is poverty is a mindset. Broke is a temporary condition. Broke is temporary, but poverty is a mindset. That simply says this, that if we can change your mind about money, money will do this, change his mind about you and stick around for a whole lot longer. So every single day, we're trying to get you to that land of more than enough, from that land of not enough to the land of more than enough. And we're doing that by helping you change your mind about money. So every day we're coming on between 7 a.m. and 7.15 to actually help you. Good morning. Uh, help you understand biblical principles in the morning and practical application in the afternoon just for one particular purpose. And that is to help you get to that land of more than enough. That is where well, you have enough for you and someone else. That someone else is your children's children because the Bible says this, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And I am excited about it. We've been talking about for our morning meditational. We've been talking about Abraham for quite some time. Abraham has just had his name changed from Abram to Abraham. We talked about what that means uh, as far as in the spirit, in the, in, the, in the earthly realm, in the kingdom realm, in the earthly realm, in the visible and invisible. Mm -hmm. Abraham versus Abram. Abram versus Abraham. And then uh, we now just got to the part where Abraham laughed. Abraham laughed. And we talked about your tongue. Your tongue is what can get you in trouble. Your trunk tongue is what can get you in trouble. Um, we went to James chapter 3 and began to talk about how the tongue is what keeps the whole body, the whole body under control. If you can contain this thing, the Bible says you can you can control your whole life and your whole body. I didn't say it. James said it in James chapter three, verse number two. He said, if you can control your tongue, you can control your whole body and your whole life by your tongue. Well, we went there. We said, well, what does your tongue come from? What does your words come from? Well, the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So if you want to control your tongue, which the Bible says no man can tame, but we figured out how to do it. Man can't do it, but the word of God can so we figured out, well, the Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So the things that we say are the things that come out of our heart. Before you got saved, your heart was 100% evil. I, I can't say it again, say it again. Before you got saved, there was your heart was 100% evil, which means there was nothing good in you. You were a reprobate, the Bible says you were of a reprobate mind, which means there was no good in you, nothing good in you. Um, only what's good can come from who? Of the Father. And so now the father he lives in you because the son is in him and he abides in him. He abides in you. It's a whole other thing. But anyway, um, then we begin to talk about, well, if the heart is evil, how do I, why do I say that? And how do I say that? Well, Jeremiah chapter verse number 17 says the heart is deceitful and above anything else is wicked. And then we went to Mark chapter seven, verse number 21. It says evil thoughts and desires and all these evil things, they come from where? The heart. It's stored up in your heart. It's stored up in your heart. And then don't forget, we also talked about Luke, where it talks about uh, with our heart, that the good is stored up in our heart or the bad is stored up in our heart and uh, is going to manifest out of you. So whatever your heart is, that's what's going to come out of your mouth. What comes out of your mouth is what's going to direct and guide your life. You want to know how to get your money right? Get your tongue right. When I get your tongue right, get your heart right. How do we get our heart right? I'm glad you asked. You get your heart right with this right here, the word of God. We want the Hebrews chapter four. Verse number, what is it, 419? First 18, I think it was, 18 and 19. Well, it says the word of God is living, it is active, sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing the son of the soul and the spirit. And, and then it says, and the joints and marrow and the thoughts and the intentions of the what? The heart. You want to get your word? The Bible talks about it. Your word will piss your heart. It will tell you what's good. It will tell you what's bad. It will tell you how to get up and how to, you know, how to get out. The Bible will tell you. Uh, excuse me, the word of God, it will begin to shape and redefine and reform your life and begin to re uh, put a new image on your life. Why? Because you're no longer the same image. You are a new creature. Your heart is not the same anymore. So let's get started. Let's talk about there. Go from there. Uh, your heart is not the same anymore. Your heart is not the same anymore. You are a new creature in Christ. 
The only thing that can change or control your heart or tame your heart is the word of God. The only thing, the only thing that can control your heart is the word of God. So with that being said, gave you a long review really quick. I hope you guys caught that. Uh, we went through like two days and two minutes. So <laughs> let's go to um, Proverbs chapter four, verse number one. Proverbs number verse number four, uh, Proverbs four and one. We're talking about if you want to manage your money, you got to manage your, your mouth. And I, I believe that was keeping the mind. Many of us broke because we don't know how to tame our tongue. We can't tame it. This word of God does. Wow, I got several verses in chapter four. I'm almost to the point where I want to read the whole thing, but I'm not going to. Let's go to number 20. Let's we'll start at verse number 20. It's talking about wisdom, and it's talking about all the things that uh, you want to do, and he's giving them good wisdom um, to the point where he's actually, one of them was to the son. He's like, hey, got some things to share with you, son. But we want to go down to verse number 20. It says, my son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my what? Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your what? Just keep the, your words within your heart. Above all else, what? Guard your heart. For everything flows out of your heart. Keep your mouth. You notice it's moving from the heart to the what? To the mouth. It's moving from the heart to the mouth. He says, listen, I need you to, I need you to uh, above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. Listen, I'm going to tell you. Everything you do flows from your heart. Everything. I'm not saying it. Proverbs. Uh, Solomon is actually saying it. Everything you do. Flows from your heart. Every single thing you do. How you speak flows from your heart. Your attitude flows from your heart. How you think, it flows from your heart. The Bible says this. Your desires flow from your heart. You thought that it was the devil. You thought it was, uh, you thought you want to blame it on the devil. Oh, the devil has a catalog of all my weaknesses. You want to, no. The Bible says that stuff is already in you. And the way you get it out is with the word of God. Every issue that we have comes from our heart. Out of it flows, everything flows from the heart. Keep your mouth free from perversity and keep corrupt talk away from your lips. He went from the he went from the heart to your mouth. Why? Because your heart will control what you say. If you want to know who somebody is, listen to what they say. Listen to how they talk. Are they angry? Are they bitter? Are they jealous? Uh, are they, you know, are they narcissistic? Are they uh, selfish. All of these things will begin to come out of their mouth. Are they more interested in you than you are and then they're interested in themselves? Do they talk about them or do they want to talk about you? Those are questions you want to ask. When you get to know somebody, when you want to know somebody's personality, what do they always talk about? You can only get out of you what you put out and put in you. Remember in chapter Mark chapter, uh, remember in Mark uh, chapter 7 when we read that and the Bible talked about how uh, it's the, what comes out of a man that defiles him. Well, as you keep reading, the, the, as you read before that text, they were actually talking about why the, why the disciples did not fast and wash their hands before they ate. And Jesus said, well, it's not what goes in you that defiles you, what comes out of you. But we also have to understand that what our ear gate and what our, our eye gate, what we see and what we hear, controls what goes into our heart. What goes into our heart controls what comes out of our mouth. What comes out of our mouth controls what goes into our destiny. You have to be controlled about what you listen to. You have to be concerned about, controlled about, concerned about what you listen to, concerned about what you watch. You cannot put garbage in your heart and expect you to have a life of abundance and peace. And expect for you to be able to pray the word of God. You want to get this word in you. You want it. You have to get this word in you. The word of God is how you feed your spirit. The word of God is how you feed your spirit. All right. So that was Proverbs chapter verse number four. And we want to try to get through this because I wanted to actually get to another part today. And I'm a little late. We got about another five minutes before and I'm not probably going to get there. Um, mm -mm. We're probably not going to get there. That's okay. We're going to let God have his way uh, with us this morning. Listen to this. When God gives you over to a reprobate mind, the Bible talks about how their hearts were darkened. In Romans chapter 1, verse 21, it talks about how their hearts were darkened. And then later on, we hear about salvation in chapter 10. How, how do you actually get saved? It says, if you believe with your what? Let's go there. Romans chapter 10, verse number 10. 
I was going to try to talk about it, but let's go ahead and read it. There's some things that you can do with your mind and some things you can do with your heart. And you say your heart is who you are. What's wrong with who you are as a person? You say your heart is who you are. It's all of you, your, your entire, your being. So watch this. For it's with your heart that you believe and are justified is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. We're going to probably end up closing right here. Check this out. I want y'all really to get this. And this is, this scripture here has separated many denominations. The scripture here has, uh, good morning, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Jefferson. This, this scripture here has separated many denominations. It has separated many, um, man, just so many different things. So we put the cart before the horse many times. This is what the Bible says. And this is not what George says, what the word of God says. And we're just going to break it up. For it's with your heart that you believe and are justified. Stop there. You are not justified by what you do. You're justified by what you believe. But you believe with your heart, not with your mind. Many times we try to figure out when is a person saved, how they get saved, what brings salvation, what brings justification. You are justified by what you believe, but you have to believe it in your heart. You have to believe it in your entire being. You have to believe it within yourself. That means that I can't be convinced that Jesus is not Lord. Why? Because everything about me, everything in me believes that. And when everything in me has capsulated that and I come into the revelation and I believe it with my heart, not with my mind. So we got many people coming to the church and they believe things with their mind. And because you believe it with your mind, uh, you can be convinced differently. But when you have an experience with Christ, when you know that you know, because I've actually, I, I know God because I've experienced God. I know God because he's in my life. I know God because he's changed me. It's something I can't even articulate, something I can't explain, but there's something on the inside of me. I've seen God move. I've seen God work. And I know within my heart that there's God. I know within my heart that Jesus died for me. I know within my heart that he rose from the dead. It's when you believe that with your heart, the Bible says that you can now confess it, what? With your mouth. There are some other things that's going on in your life that you believe with your head and you've been confessing with your mouth, but you've never believed it in your heart. When you come into the real truth that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, when we come into the real truth that whatever I speak out of my mouth is the same words that was spoken in Genesis the word of God, the same word that was spoken in Genesis when God said, let there be. The same words that made the heavens and the earth, the creations and the earth. The same words. When we come into the realization of that and we believe that within our heart, you start speaking to mountains and watch them move. We'll start speaking into our finances and watch us begin to grow in wealth and abundance. We'll start speaking and the dead will rise. We'll start speaking and watch the healing do. There's nothing on this earth that God is going to do for us. God says what? If there's one sick among you, what do you do? We go lay hands on the sick. The old, I remember growing up in the, in the church. We ain't going to say what church it was, but I remember the deacon getting down on one knee, pour the chair out, and he got down on one knee, and uh, he, he would begin to call on God. That's what we call it. We call it. He's calling on God. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, go by the hospital right now, Lord. And God, touch the sick and the shut-in, Jesus. For God, you know all of the needs. And God, you know, we, we begin to call, call it God calling on God. But God never said, I'm going to go to the hospital and touch the sick. He says, no, if there's one amongst you, you go heal the sick. But you got to believe that in your heart. You got to believe in your heart that the power of God, good morning, the power of God dwells on the inside of you. Well, how does the power of God dwell on the inside of you? The word of God is living and is active. The word of God is inside of you. And the word of God is what does the work. You don't do the work. I don't do the work. There's nothing special about George. There's nothing special about you. Other than the fact that we have hooked up with the Holy Ghost. That we have hooked up with the word of God. And because of that, we're now connected to the Father. And the Father now has a channel to work through us. When you speak this word, it will change your life.
The reason that we can't get our life together is because our heart's messed up. We got to believe with every piece of fiber in us. When you speak, let's go to Mark chapter, Mark 11, verse number 22. We're not supposed to even go this way. This is, this, this is God this morning. Mark 11, verse number 22. Mark 11, verse number 22. We're going to close out with this. I know it said we're going to close out with Romans. Uh, but listen, you first can, you first believe with your heart, you then confess it out of your mouth. You believe with your heart, you confess it out of your mouth. Well, we've been, leaving, we've been believing some other things with our heart, but we've been confessing out of our mouth, and it's been manifesting, and it has not been for good. Don't forget, we speak good or evil. It comes out of the abundance of our heart. That's what the Bible says. Mark 11, verse number 22. Watch this. Have faith in God. We're not going to even deal with that because that's a whole other scripture. That, oh, God, we can do this have faith in God for a whole week, a whole week. Jesus answered, truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt where? In their heart. But believes what they say will happen. It will be done for them. You got to believe it in your heart. Believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth. That means there's nothing can change your mind. That means that you don't have a doubt that can actually come in and penetrate the force field that has in you. Well, how do I get that kind of faith? How do I get that kind of faith? Remember the disciples said, Lord, increase my faith. Remember, remember the disciples said that? Number one, start speaking it. Lord, increase my faith. Well, he says this is how you get more faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Not past tense. Faith didn't come by what you heard. Faith doesn't come by what you're going to hear. Faith comes by hearing. You got to continue to get the word of God in you. Get the word of God in you. Get the word of God in you. And it will transform your life. It's active. It's active. That means after I get this word in me, it's still down. I can read it this morning in the night. That word of God is still inside of me, churning and generating, transforming me, renewing me. That same word, that same seed is still working on the inside of me. That same seed that I got from last Sunday is still transforming me, still work. And when I get another word, it hooks up with the old word and it begins to transform me and regenerate me. And I begin to look and see my, I'm thinking different. I'm acting different. People can see there's something different about me. I'm noticing things that I never noticed before. What do you mean? I'm noticing the birds that are singing that I now can hear them praising God. The trees are waving in the wind. I can see them worshiping God. I can now, I, I'm seeing things that I, I'm, I'm paying attention to stuff I never paid attention to. I see them, them now. I used to hear them complain, but now I can hear the thoughts behind what they thought. The Holy Spirit is giving me Revelation knowledge about other people. Why? Because the word is working not only in my life, but now I was working in other people's lives through me. This word ain't just for you. The word is not just for you. The word is for everybody else that comes to you, through you. God wants to get to them and he's using you to do it. But you got to start. We got to start. I got to start. We're getting this word in my life. and begin to talk about how this word would transform my heart. So what are we going to do this morning? We're going to actually get our confession out. We'll get a confession out. If you guys don't have your confession, please email me at george at gmhoward.com. That's george at gmhoward.com. We'll get our confession out. And we're going to begin to confess the word of God over our life. It's two pages. I know y'all like, it's long. You, you want to talk to God? I mean, it's, it's, if you, we can't read a confession scripture. I mean, let's get several scriptures. But we got we to gotta be able to do that. All right? Listen to this. It says, I delight myself in the word. Of the Lord, therefore I am blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in my house, and righteousness endureth forever. My heavenly Father gives me power to get wealth. What things soever I desire when I pray and believe that I have declared, I'm sorry, that I believe that I receive them and I shall have them. I am filled with the knowledge of God, God's will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. His will is my prosperity. God delights in my prosperity. He gives me power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant on earth. I remember the Lord my God, for it is he that gives me the power to get wealth. I immediately respond to faith and guidance of his Holy Spirit within me. I am always in the right place at the right time because he orders my steps of the Lord. Because my steps are ordered of the Lord. Excuse me. God has given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. And I am able to process, possess all that God has provided for me. God is unfailing, unlimited source of my supply. 
My financial income now increases as the blessings of the Lord overtake me. As I give, it is given unto me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. The wealth of the sinner is laid up for me. I will not faint, for in due time and at the appointed season, I shall reap if I faint not. I honor the Lord with my substance and the first fruit of my increases. My barns are filled with plenty. My press is burst forth with new wine. I am like a tree planted by the rivers of the water. I bring forth fruit in my season. My leaf shall not wither, and whatever I do shall prosper. The grace of God even makes my mistakes to prosper. I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the field. I am blessed in my coming in and blessed in my going out. I am blessed in the basket and blessed in the store. My bank accounts are blessed. My investments are blessed. My health is blessed. My relationships flourish. The blessings of the Lord overtake me in every area of my life. The blessings of the Lord makes me, makes me truly rich and he adds no sorrow to it. My God makes all grace and abundance towards me in every favor and every earthly blessing so that I may have all sufficiency for all things and abound to every good work. Whatever I set my hand to do shall prosper. The Lord has opened unto me his good treasure and blessed the work of my hands. He has commanded the blessings upon me in my storehouse that all that I undertake. I delight myself in the Lord and he gives me the desires of my heart. The Lord rebukes the devourer for my namesake. No weapon formed against me that shall, against my finances or me shall prosper. All obstacles and hindrance to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. My mind is renewed by the word of God. Therefore, I forbid thoughts of failure and defeat to inhibit my mind. I am delivered from the power and authority of darkness. I forbid, th I forbid thoughts of failure and defeat to inhibit my mind. I'm sorry. I am delivered from the power and authority of darkness. I cast down reasonings and imaginations that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. And I bring every thought into captivity and to the obedience of the word of God. The Lord causes my thoughts to become agreeable to his will, so my plans are established to succeed. There is no lack, for my God supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Whatever I ask the Father, in the name of Jesus, he will give it to me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Jesus came that I might have life and have it more abundantly. The Lord has a pleasure in the prosperity of his servant and Abraham's blessings are mine. That's our word of God for the day. Listen, that's our confessional. I hope you guys meditate on this word all day long and understand, uh, good morning vocal doctor, and understand that the word of God needs to be in your heart. And as that word of God is in your heart, you, got, you can speak anything. And the Bible says anything, speak to the mountain. That means the, the mountain of your credit, the mountain of your debt, your marriage, your family, the people you've been praying for to get saved, whatever that mountain is in your life, once you get this word of God in your heart and you speak it, the word will do the work and you begin to see that thing begin to manifest. All right, that's our time for the day. If you didn't get it, get the repeat. Go to Jim Howard Jr. Ministries on YouTube. We can get it there too. Everything we do is archived. We continue to pray for our friend Lady Drea who's in the promised land and uh, I'll see you guys uh, Thank you. Thank you so much. I need to uh, actually upload those right now before I get up. All right. So God bless you. I'll see you tonight where we're talking about procrastination and taxation. The two nations you don't want to live in. Procrastination and taxation as it pertains to the enemies that create wealth. I'll see you tonight. God bless you.